Hello and welcome back to Granted Gardens. Today is June 2nd and that means that it's been officially one year since we posted our very first YouTube video ever. That's exciting as well because we also have all of our pots and our gardens planted. Uh, so today is going to be the first official garden tour of the year. So as you guys know, uh, it has been a very busy and exciting last few weeks for us. Um, for those of you that may not know, we started our entire garden from seed this year. And we started the seeds um, in a grow light system that Tyler set up. And so that's what's really new and exciting about this year's garden is we've watched all of these plants come from seed. We have not purchased anything yet. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start you off with our pots. Now the one thing about our deck setup and the pots that we do that I always like to really enforce is that even with very little space, you are 120% capable of growing your own food. Um, on this deck, we have quite a few pots, but um, it's, it really is, it's doable. You may not be able to grow mass amounts like we do in the garden, um, but it's still a great harvest. Um, we haven't really like toned into the type of plants and what would be best for pots. I think we're still in a bit of an experimental phase. Tyler's down there working on the chicken coop. Um, but I do want to show you guys what we're what we're planting this year in our pots, uh, so you can kind of follow along throughout the year and decide if there's any varieties here that you think that you would like to grow um, if you are looking for small space gardening. Full disclosure, when we planted seeds, um, not all of them were labeled. <laughs> so, as a lesson, I'm gonna tell you guys, like always label, always label your seeds. If you're growing from seed, always label them um, because by the time that you like move them around and water them and up pot them two or three times before you actually plant them in the ground or in planters, um, that one seed has moved quite a bit and it's really hard to tell what's what at that point. So there are some plants up here that are unlabeled um, but bear with us and hang in there because it'll be fun because there'll be little surprise plants. I just had to get a shot of my water fountain. Isn't it beautiful? I love this thing. And it's such a soothing little sound. And every once in a while we'll get a bird that'll come up here and visit. It's so precious. All right, pot number one. Here we've got, um, hi. <laughs> here we've got what's labeled Brad's Atomic. Um, and then we've got a purple basil in the center here. And then we've got a little sucker that had come off from one of these plants um, that we're gonna try and get started. So these are Brad's Atomic Tomatoes. Then this pot over here, again, another purple basil. And then we have three tomato plants that are the blue gold berries, um, blue gold, gold berry cherries. Got a zook. I'm really looking forward to Zooks. Uh, two unlabeled peppers here in my pot. Uh, marigold because we had some leftovers out of the garden so I figured I'd try and put some flowers up here. Um, they had dried out a bit downstairs so those will die off and more will come back. These are pepperoncini peppers. And then this guy here this is what is called on deck corn by Burpee. So I have to take a break here. This guy right here is the on deck corn by Burpee. I tried to grow corn a little bit last year. Actually, it wasn't even a full attempt. I had gotten two corn plants from a plant swap and just kind of like tossed them in the garden bed and figured I'd give them a try. Um, Apparently two is just not enough to pollinate each other. You definitely want to get them in groups. Um, but anyway, so we were flipping through the seed catalogs at the beginning of this year, and I was so excited when I came across this 
variety that you can grow in pots. Um, it's from Burpee and it's called On Deck Corn. I believe this is the first year that it's ever been out. If not, then it's like the first few years that they've been selling these. Um, and the concept is, is that you can plant nine seeds in a large pot on your deck and you should get nine corn plants in that pot. So I'm excited about this because number one, I like the idea of having uh, corn stalks to decorate with at Halloween, which is really like my main purpose for growing corn because I never really thought I'd get corn out of it. But these ones, like we have a chance at actually getting corn from a corn plant grown on our deck. How cool is that? So I actually have two pots of these. Um, I'll show you another one when we get to the other side of the deck. But I did try, because I was an amateur, to grow some of the corn from seed. And later I found out that it's better for you to just direct sow them. So the pot that I just showed you, I just direct sowed nine seeds in there probably four days ago. Yeah, today's Tuesday. Four days ago, it was Saturday, like Friday or Saturday, we put those in and they're already sprouting. How cool is that? Two mystery tomato plants. Got another zook up there, zucchini. Um, my old strawberry plant, this is actually about three years old now. Um, he did have siblings, but they died off uh, in the house over the winter. I did bring this inside. Um, and the one plant survived, but he looks like he's doing pretty good. So I put him out here. We got some comfrey, which this was left over. Um, Tyler originally grew some to put in the pawpaw garden. So down here is another mystery tomato plant. And then back here, we're going to try some uh, beans in pots. So these are actually bush beans. So they should do just well um, in a pot here. They shouldn't climb much. I think this guy is a little weak just because we started him as a seed and he got pretty big. Usually they'll grow upright, um, but we got them in the pots. We'll see how they do. Here we have two Anaheim peppers down there. Uh, those are mystery plants. I think Tyler knows what they are, but I don't. Um, this is a lemongrass, another lemongrass, and two more pepper mystery plants. Over here, another two pepper mystery plants. Up here, four pepper mystery plants. <laughs> this is my second on deck corn. Um, as you can see, I did grow this one from seed, so he's a bit ahead of the game. But I think I started about 12 from seed and only one made it. So that's why I say direct sow, direct sow, direct sow. And look at how the other ones are coming up. They came up so fast. This is just a mystery plant from the backyard that Tyler put in a pot. <laughs> not sure what it is. And last but not least, my lettuce bowl. If you guys are looking to grow pots, plants in pots, <laughs> I highly, highly, highly recommend you start with lettuce, 100%. Number one, lettuce is fairly easy. You just put it in a pot and you make sure that you water it plenty. And that's it. Um, number two, you can fit about six plants in a large pot and once it grows, it'll overflow over that pot and you'll be picking from that plant fistfuls a day. I mean, it's awesome. So if you're just starting out and you want to know what's a really good vegetable to grow in a pot, I suggest lettuce. So here we are at the herb garden. We were pretty lucky, a lot of this stuff actually overwintered. So the stuff in the back, that those are all supposed to be perennials. So we knew that those would come back. Um, but most of the stuff up here was either wishy-washy or should have only been an annual. Um, so we've got some more purple basil here. Um, down here is thyme. That was from last year. The thyme was from last year. The purple basil we planted this year. Um, but look at all of that. I mean, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. Here's my spearmint that came back from last year. We probably knew he was going to come back. Um, these are chives and the chives actually lasted well through the winter. And then once the summer, uh, or once the weather started changing, they went to seed, but their flowers are so beautiful. 
down here. I'm not entirely sure what these are. Um, I did have borage planted here last year, but I don't think that's borage, but I'll let them go. If they end up being weeds, I'll tear them out. Here's a chamomile that I planted this year. Uh, basil that I planted this year. This is a sage plant that came back from last year. This is oregano that came back from last year. These are our green onions that lasted all winter long. And then of course, same situation, um, once the weather got nicer, they kind of just went to seed, but they're really pretty. I mean, look at the size of these things. They're awesome. And then this little guy down here is another time, I believe, um, from last year. Uh, we got some cilantro that reseeded itself. So two volunteer cilantro, oh, three volunteer cilantro right here, which is awesome because we did not buy any of that. Um, this is a chive that we grew from seed. Well, we didn't grow any from seed, I should say. Um, this is a chive that we grew from seed this year, so I tucked them in here. I got three more chamomile plants I planted this year. This guy right here is a marjoram. Um, he looks a little rough because I literally just planted him like a day ago. Um, but we got him in a plant swap. And then this little flower right here, I believe is a marigold. Um, again, had flowers left over, so just kind of pop them in. This is my yarrow from last year. I purchased this yarrow um, and it just drops its seeds. So this yarrow just reseeded and is completely taking over, which is okay, I don't mind it. It fills in the garden. Um, I've got a salvia plant from last year that came back. Over there is my rosemary. Um, that obviously was there last year and overwintered. Um, I planted a nasturtium in the same spot that I had it last year, but this was a nasturtium I grew from seed, from the seeds, from the plant that was here last year. This is our dogwood. We got that dogwood as a little tiny twig about two years ago um, from uh, Green Neighbor Festival in Frederick. Back here is a bunch of oregano. This I got from a plant swap last year and it just came back happy. This is yarrow that we actually found growing in the backyard after we purchased that one and I learned what yarrow looked like. So we found this. Um, we have quite a few of these and we kind of placed them throughout the gardens and it just is taking over. But we got more over here. Uh, down here is a dead nettle, uh, which overwintered. I planted last year. I got that from uh, I might have purchased that one. Yeah, I bought that one. Um, I don't know what this is. I think this is another salvia plant. Not entirely sure what this one is. I'll have to look back at my old videos. Maybe once it flowers, it'll be easier to tell. Uh, I got a zinnia here, which is rough because he was grown in the basement, but he'll bump back. I actually just saw a snake out here the other day, and I'm currently walking around barefoot, so trying to be mindful of where my feet go. <laughs> All right, so this is just my miscellaneous bed along the house. Uh, this is a butterfly bush that we got um, in a plant swap. Well, we swapped with someone, a local neighbor. She was down the road um, last year. So we got this one here. Um, I put a sunflower in and the sunflower there because I had them extra. This is my crazy, I don't know what it is kind of plant, but this I also got from the plant swap last year. What's really cool is the bottoms of these leaves are like a really dark purple. They're so beautiful. I love that plant. I don't know what it is though. And then down here is our strawberries. Oh my goodness. So at the end of the summer last year, we had a ton of strawberry plants that I had put in pots and I was actually growing in pots. And I initially was, for the last couple of years, bringing my strawberries inside the house. But we had so many, because I had so many runners that I had potted, that I didn't have room inside the house. So as a last minute effort, I just kind of like took the plants that I could not bring in and just tossed them in this bed here um, and hoped for the best. And they did so well. All of my other strawberry plants, except for the one pot that I showed you, died off in the house. And these guys are doing amazing. These don't have any snakes in here. 
Oh, and we're getting runners too, so I can start potting those. Oh my gosh, we have so many berries. I'm gonna need a basket. I'll have to come, I'll have to come back out here with a basket to get the rest of those. My lamb's ear, these were um, part of the plant swap last year, and I think that's just about it for over here. Um, I got some more things I'm working on here, but this is the butterfly bush that Tyler bought me last year. We planted some new ferns underneath of the deck. This is my rhubarb plant. Something's eating him. I need to address this because he's not happy. Okay, so I got a basket. Here's my prize winning strawberry so far. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. That's awesome. Yum. Pretty good haul, I'd say. I'm not gonna do a full reveal of the chicken coop yet until it's done. <laughs> no. Here is the garden. So I've actually been trying really hard to make sure that I don't overcrowd stuff this year. Hasn't been easy. There's probably a couple things I could move. There's probably a couple things that I shouldn't have thrown in last minute, but. So here we are in the first bed. I tried to make sure I labeled everything this time. I got two little tiny plants over here. Those are eggplants. Um, I got my zinnias here for beauty effect. I got three more zucchinis because I really hope that we get a massive amount of zucchinis this year. I want to try those. Well, try them, but I'd like to do more with them. Um, we have golden scallop squash here. Um, back along the edge back there, I have a Valencia water, um, a Valencia winter melon. So those will be able to grow those melons and those will store throughout the winter. These three, or these two here, these two here we have stuffer tomatoes. Uh, Aunt Molly's ground cherry, which we've never grown before, we're excited about. Uh, these four here are tomatillos. Uh, gran what is that? Rio Grande Verde tomatillos. In the back here, we've got a cucumelon plant. In the back here, we've got a cucumelon plant. And then these three peppers here are unmarked. Dang it. I thought I had everything marked. I lied. Um, but I remember what these are. These are mini red bell peppers. So there's mini red bell peppers here. Um, nasturtiums and then we've got our new arch with lima beans along the back there and then a kajari melon on the edge here we're gonna try doing kajari melons I've never grown those before um, I did my flower, flower pots where I've got bachelor buttons and marigolds planted in them over here is our experiment for the year. We're gonna try growing tomatoes and hay bales, straw bales. Um, so we did a video on that, I'll get that posted. Um, but we've got some tomatoes in here. I don't remember the exact ones, but I have it in the, in the video. And then over here, along the other side of the arch, we've got, we've got Kentucky pool beans. And then this one right here is a purple pool bean. Which we'll get. Even the leaves are super pretty and purple, but he's pretty big. He's all the way up here. Um, this is my tomato garden. So I've got painted lady tomato right here, green zebra tomatoes there, some purple basil in between. Um, these are pink Berkeley tie-dye tomatoes, and so are those. Those are pink Berkeley tie-dye tomatoes. And then another um, Aunt Molly's ground cherry. These were the peas that we grew last year um, that I love so much. We started a few of them from seed and they're not looking too hot, but I did also direct sow some, so hopefully we'll get something out of that. Great job climbing. This is a scarlet runner 
pole bean. So I tried to grow, uh, start a few of them from seed, only one made it. So we'll try those, something new. Uh, two more tomatoes in the straw bales. And then along here we have Cherokee Trail of Tears. And those are beans, so those are, we'll climb up here and we'll get beans from them. This is Tyler's tomato bed. He's also got different varieties of basil in here and also some onions. Um, the tomatoes that are in here though are a mix of Brad's Atomic and Mortgage Lifters. Um, Tyler also did his buckets of potatoes. So we've got a few of them here and then some larger ones down there. And this is my third arch, which I'm excited about. The arches are new this year too. Um, along this side, I'm growing Lufa. And yes, that is like the thing that you shower with in the shower, the little scrubby from the shower. Um, is a loofah and those are actually grown on vines um, so hopefully these guys will make it and do really really well and I can show those of you that don't really know much about how loofahs are grown what they look like they're an adventure in themselves and then along the other side of the arch here we have tiger melons so we're gonna do a few different varieties of melons this year but these ones here are tiger melons Then we have the in-ground bed. So this was what we were referring to as our back to Eden bed. This was a no dig. Um, we just piled up dirt and compost on it. Uh, there really wasn't a method to the madness. We probably didn't do it like 100% spot on, but it was, it was our experiment over the fall slash winter and everything seems to be super happy here. So we've got our cabbages that are just massive. We've got a row of onions, um, this down here, this is a row of carrots, uh, beets is next right here, um, and then these are the grapes that we planted last year, so they're back and doing their thing. And then around the corner here we have some more cabbages. Ah, what a garden this will be when everything is filling in and growing going to be gorgeous. It's a bit bright out here, but I want to show you guys the front gardens too. And I'm not patient enough to wait for the sun to go down. So right here I had, uh, my neighbors actually had this cute little pot. Um, that was just kind of in the back property behind our house and they said that I could have it so I was really excited. So I upcycled that and made it a planter and I've got pot marigolds and zinnias in there. But again, they were growing in the basement so their first little flowers need to die off but they'll come back. Over here are my roses which are absolutely breathtaking. And then of course we have to have pots, so we have another surprise tomato. We don't know what he is. Another one over here. And then we have a surprise pepper plant that's growing here, so that's okay. We love surprises. Please excuse the mess in the background. As you know, we're building a chicken coop and remodeling a kitchen, so stuff and things. But. This is my cottage garden. And there's so much stuff in here. I'm not even going to bore you all with the details, but I'll give you a quick look around.
know if you can tell, but somebody moved into my birdhouse. I don't think they're home right now, but he's been working hard to build a nest. Isn't that so cool? Well, that's just about it. That's everything that's in the ground as of right now, though. If you know us, though, it might change uh, a few times um, before everything starts getting ready to be picked. Oh, we still haven't done much with the greenhouse yet, but that was a new addition this year. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really look forward to sharing more with you soon.